This is Harold Spellman, founding and senior pastor of the Pinal Praise Community Church, located in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, where we are fulfilling the great commandment and the great commission. This is Word Break. Coming up on the program today, a powerful message from the Word of God. Under anointed preaching and teaching. Oh, I know sometimes you don't feel up to it, but church, you're going to have to learn how to press your way, how to come into the house of God, here regardless of how you feel. Press your way, press your way. Come in the house of God, lay before God, and Ask God, what must I do to get another anointing, another level of anointing? Oh, come on, somebody. Give God a praise. This and more coming up today on Word Break. One more time.
Amen. Praise the Lord. While you are standing, turn in your Bibles to uh, the book of Exodus, if you would, please. We're going to look at verse 20, uh, chapter 20, chapter 20, chapter 20, chapter 20 of the book of Exodus. And we're going to, um, we're going to go right down after the Ten Commandments. So you're safe. I'm not going to pre preach on the Ten Commandments, okay? Though you can't get away from them, though we need to assimilate every one of them, please memorize them. Uh, they're still relevant, even though this is in the Old Testament, it's still God's word. God is Alpha and Omega, his word is Alpha and Omega. The knowledge, the understanding, and the wisdom that's in the word of God is from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21. It's there for us. And... Um, I want to talk to you today from the thought, no more middleman. No more middleman. Um, I'm not suggesting that we can approach God um, without going through Jesus. That's not what I'm, what I'm saying. But I'm talking about us putting more confidence in man to hear what God is saying to us, that they would interpret it for us and pass it on to us. God wants to speak to his people directly. If you're saved and you got the Holy Ghost in you, God wants to talk directly to you. God has, God has singled you out. He's called you out of the crowd. And um, he wants to speak directly to you. It's a great responsibility once we hear that word. Uh, but first we got to hear it and we got to assemble. We got to believe it, accept it, confess it, obey it, and walk in understanding to it. Understanding will come. Wisdom will come as to how to apply it. But you have to make up your mind that you are going to grab a hold of what you hear God is saying. Don't let the devil make you think that you can't hear God. Amen. Don't, don't, don't let the devil think that God is going to say something to you that's so hard and challenging and difficult that you won't be able to implement, though you may want to. If God is speak, speaking it to you. He knows what he's doing. He's omniscient. He's all-knowing. He knows you. He created you. So he knows what to say to you. And he knows what you can handle and what you can't handle. Amen. In the book of Exodus, chapter 20, we're going to begin reading at the 18th verse. These uh, three or four verses here, I'm going to read verse 18, and you read every other verse with me. Verse 21, we will read together as we always do. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. They removed themselves. And they stood. Amen. Go ahead. And we will hear, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. Hmm. Verse 20. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces that you send not. Verse 21 together. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. Father, we thank you so much for this word. We ask that your anointing would be upon us, that we would be open to what thus saith the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, and speak. Open up our understanding and show us great and wonderful things in your word. God, we bind up anything that is not of God, anything that would come to interfere or distract from hearing the pureness of the Word of God. For Lord, we have come today in the name of Jesus to receive what thus saith the Lord. And so we bind up any interference, Lord, and we thank you for the anointing upon us today to speak the truth to assimilate the word as we hear it and that we would walk out of this assembly, out of this congregation, Lord God, out of this church today, believing that we are going to be able to implement that which we have heard in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. No more middleman. Moses 
Moses was a type of a Christ. It was a shadow of, of the coming Messiah. He was a man, just like you and me, he may have had a different station in life, different gifts and resources and talents and abilities, but he was a man. He was a man that God chose for whatever reason that he wanted to use. And just like people that come into our lives from time to time, God will use them under the anointing of God to give us counsel, uh, to give us a word, to speak to us, sometimes to rebuke us, to challenge us. It's up to us to receive it. But that person is only there for a reason and for a season. It's a temporary assignment. No one, including your pastor, is uh, given to you by God uh, to walk that closely with you forever. Even though the relationship will pull you close together, even though you will interact with one another, perhaps for the rest of your lives, but there is a part of God, there is a time when you will get to a place in your relationship with God that God reserves the right to speak to you personally, intimately, and on a level that no one else possibly can. The Bible tells us about that Jesus, the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, and the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, who is the power of the Godhead. He's the teacher that the two of them are praying for us on, on a level that we can't pray for ourselves. Uh, no matter how heavy the load may be, no matter how great the burden, when we pray, we go to God and we pray, and we may have our Garden of Gethsemane experiences where we feel like we want to sweat drops of blood. It may be so severe, but no matter how, how challenging it may be, it is, it, it is not to the degree that God the Son and God the Holy Spirit is able to pray. He knows he's able to empty the bucket. He's able to touch the bottom. Isaiah talks about the bucket of salvation. Well, the Holy Spirit is able to go places that you cannot possibly go. The, 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 the Son is able to go places in your heart and in your mind that you, not, you, you could never go if you live to be a million years old in this life. God deserves the right to speak to you. And he wants to say things to you that, 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 that only he can say to us. I, I think if he's God and he is the creator of everything, if he's created us and he's allowed us to be here, uh, we, don't, we, we, we don't have to be here. Uh, we, we could have been aborted in our mother's womb, God forbid. Uh, that we could have had an accident. Uh, your, your, your mom could have had an accident on the way to the hospital that God could have permitted it to the degree where you could have been taken out of this life, but you are here and you're closed in your right mind and you have the presence and the sense to come into the house of God even today to sit up under the anointing of God and to let the Holy Spirit of the living God open up God's word and show you some knowledge and some understanding and drop some wisdom in your heart. That's because God willed it and no one can stop it. You belong to God. And the children of Israel uh, depended on Moses. After, after all, it was Moses that God used to come into Egypt and to uh, command Pharaoh to let God's people go. And after the 10 plagues that was worked uh, uh, on behalf of Moses and, and, and God's response to God, and God was able to use Moses to lead over 3 million plus. Some folk believe that it could have been up to 10, 000, 10 million people that came up out of Egypt regardless. He led them out and he led them through the Red Sea and now he's in, in, in the wilderness, this dry, desolate place where God wants to teach them some things about him and about themselves and about their neighbors. They've been in bondage for so long that they have lost all sense of what's right and what's wrong. They, they have learned how to depend on their slave masters who was hard task masters. Those, those guys every day reported to Pharaoh and, and Pharaoh gave them 
uh, the instructions that they would come to the Israelites who were in slavery for, for over 430 years and they would speak into their lives and give them instructions as to what they were to do for that day. They didn't dare even have a thought unless it was connected to Pharaoh. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And God watched his people live in that kind of a circumstance for all those years, a lot like us when we have lived in our sinful condition all the, all the years that we have lived without God until one day, one day, one day, God decided to pay us a visit and to bring us into the family of God, into the body of Christ. God used Moses just like God used someone. I don't know about you, but it was my pastor, Brother Scott, who came and preached to me uh, October the 7th, 1979, and spoke life into me. And I received what thus saith the Lord. I surrendered my heart to God, and I invited the presence of God at God's sake. Oh, come on, somebody. Give God a praise. If you was there the day you got saved, And here they are, they're in the wilderness. They got up out of that fiery furnace, that place that had beat them down and they had become slaves. Now they were free, physically speaking, but mentally speaking, hear me now, they were still in bondage. This is the place where a lot of church folk find themselves right now, born again believers. Full of the Holy Ghost, some of, uh, some of us have even discovered what our, 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 our gifts and talents are. Some of us have even reported for duty and we have accepted our ambassadorship. We are walking out our assignment in the presence of God, but yet in our minds we are still victims. We're still walking around with that victim's mentality. We're not able to hear what God is telling us to do. We still got to report to some middleman, and, 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 and we got our favorite preachers, and we got our favorite teachers, and God is not able to guide us and direct us to the place where he wants us to go, where he can speak to us, where he can give us instructions, where he can give us opportunities to grow and grow up in the things of God. But we got to take two steps and then we got to stop and wait for our slave masses. We know the Bible says that the devil roams about seeking whom he may devour. The devil is able to use God's people and abuse God's people sometimes greater than he uses unsafe people whom he have access to without even permission. He don't even have to get God's permission to go in to talk to somebody that does not have the blood of Jesus, but sometimes he's able to get to Christian people and where he's able to do his great his greatest amount of damage just think about it in the house of God if the devil is able to get a hold of your mind and is he able to speak in and through you you can do greater damage in the house of God than a sinner ever could for you see the, a sinner coming you know you can brace yourself you know that that person is up to no good you know the devil is going to use him in your life and in the church and in your, and your family but it's the people of God that we have to look out for sometimes how people that have not given their hearts to God and surrendered their lives to the word of God have not made up their mind that I'm coming to church every chance I get that I'm going to open up my Bible on a daily basis that I'm going to get myself involved in relationships with other believers that I can be accountable to someone that I can uh, speak into their lives and give God an opportunity to use me in their lives that I can learn God's patterns and how he approaches people and how he does things and how he wants to use me. You see, well, sometimes we sitting down on God. Those of you that are sitting in the church right now, this church are in desperate need of workers that will step up to the plate and accept their assignment. Uh, from the nursery 
all the way to the prayer ministry. There are some of you sitting in the church right now. You're still acting like a slave. You know that God wants to use you, but you won't step up to the plate. You're letting somebody speak into your lives that are not even anointed. You would rather go on Facebook and get counsel from a backslider than you would come to church and sit in the house of God under anointed preaching and teaching. Oh, I know sometimes you don't feel up to it, but church, you're going to have to learn how to press your way, how to come into the house of God here regardless of how you feel. Press your way. Press your way. Come in the house of God. Lay before God and ask God, what must I do to get another anointing, another level of a no oh, come on somebody give God a praise now notice notice in this 20th chapter that I, I, I do need to say something in regards to these principles that are here and the Bible says and all, all the people all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet. All of this was coming from Mount Sinai because God has come down and met with Moses there. Now this is after Moses received the Ten Commandments. God had called Moses up to the mountain and spoke into his heart and told him to take this information down and give it to the people. God met with Moses there at Mount Sinai. And God had told him even before he began to, to share this information with him. And he told him to sanctify the people. And notice, I, 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 it's, 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 it's right, right above that in verse uh, 7. In fact, back up all the way in that 19th chapter to verse 3. Where the Bible points out that God uh, is speaking to Moses now. Follow me here. The Bible says, And Moses went up in, unto God, and, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain. See, that's the responsibility uh, that you have when you accept your, uh, your assignment. You, you, you go and you lay before God to let God instruct you as to what to do. And here we find Moses understanding that he's taken on this great, tremendous, overwhelming responsibility and he realized that he can't go it alone that he got to stay in God's presence that see you cannot represent God if you don't stay in his face on a daily basis see you can't wait for the hand of God where God constantly blesses you no you got to get into the heart and the face of God you see otherwise you find yourself just continuing to complain about what's going on in your life and you will be so weak and distracted that when God wants you to move out and go represent, you're not able to budge. And notice in verse 3 again, and, and the Bible says, And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, this is God speaking to Moses now, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. Verse 4, you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. They saw it, they were there. They saw the 10 plagues. They saw how the man of God went in the presence of the most powerful man on the planet at that time, under God's anointing and spoke, not asking uh, uh, for permission, but speaking under the anointing and the command of God and commanding him to let God's people go. And now here we find the the, the, the people uh, here on this side of the Red Sea and in the wilderness and the Bible says you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. God said go, go remind them. See that's what preachers are supposed to do. Sometimes we're supposed to come before you and remind you of what God did for you. How God saved you and how God healed you and how God delivered you. That's what the song is about. Uh, Brother David spent all that time preparing music for us and sometimes we just come in here and just get, just get uh, 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 entertain and, and we don't realize that God is trying to get our attention that he can 
point us in the direction because he, he wants to use us that, because God knows and we ought to know that we are not wrestling against flesh and blood but we're wrestling against principalities and powers. And we got these uh, spiritual forces that's coming against us. And, and the devil is, is here to take us out. And God is saying, come into the house of God on a regular basis and praise him and shout and receive instructions. Because when you leave here, the devil is going to pounce. And you got to be ready and able and willing to pounce back. No, come on, somebody hear this. The Bible says God spoke to Moses. He said, Moses, Moses, God called unto him out of the mountain. And he said, Moses, you shall say to the house of Jacob, who said God is not speaking anymore? God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He spoke to Moses on behalf of his people. He's still speaking today. And he's speaking to us through preachers and apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists. But he's speaking through the Holy Spirit and the word of God. If you give him an opportunity to, he wants to speak directly to you. Moses was only supposed to be there for a reason and for a season. He was a shadow of what was to come or who was to come. You got Jesus, you got the Holy Ghost, you got the Word of God. Anytime you want to hear from God, all you got to do is open this book under the anointing of God, trusting the Holy Spirit to bring to life the words that's in that book. Here Moses saying, God called him and God said to Moses, he said, you shall say to the house of Jacob. He didn't say the house of, of the Egyptians, the house of my people, the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, you, now notice he didn't say, Moses, would you like, what do you think about this, Moses? No, God spoke to him and told him what to say. Verse four, are you seeing it? You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. I, I, I was there today, I got saved. I saw what God did to those desires those fleshly desires that I had for drugs and alcohol and promiscuous sex and violence and greed and everything else you can imagine. I was there. I saw what God did to my flesh and the devil that was controlling it. That's what he's saying here to, to, to the people of God. He says that you saw it. He says you saw it. You was there. Think back to what God did in your life. Think back the day that God saved you. Some of you got saved right here at this altar and you know what the Holy Ghost did. You experienced deliverance. You came to this altar in bondage. I don't care what no one else says. You know you was in bondage. And because someone may have laid their hands on you and anointed you, and God touched you and you got up off, off of that altar and you walked out of this church a free man or woman uh, in the liberty and the freedom of the Holy Spirit and you know that it must have been the hand of God that touched you. That's what God is saying to Moses. He's saying, remind them of what I did. Remind them of how I demonstrated my power in their presence. Oh, hallelujah. He says, you have seen past tense. What I did, not Moses, you've seen what I did unto the Egyptians. And how I bear you on eagle's wings and brought you unto myself. Now, verse five, therefore, somebody say therefore. If you will obey my voice indeed. Y'all seeing this? Look at the conditions that he's putting on the children of Israel, putting the same conditions on us. If you will obey my voice, my book, my word, indeed, and keep my covenant. There it is. That commitment that you entered when you confess with your mouth that you believe in your heart that God raised Christ from the dead. You entered a covenant with the king of kings 
and the Lord of glory. It's a personal, intimate covenant. Don't have anything to do with anyone else directly. Has everything to do with you. That is your relationship that you have with God. Are you hearing this? He says, he says say unto them, you've seen what I, what I did. How I bear you up on eagle's wings and brought you unto myself. He said, now, I brought you into myself. I brought you into this wilderness experience. You didn't get here accidentally. The problems and the challenges and the troubles that you are going through, whether it's uh, Zion Prep or whether it's some of the other businesses in this house or you walking out your assignment uh, as, a, as a spouse or a parent in this church, uh, this is a wilderness experience that God has brought you to. You're here on purpose. You're here for a reason. Reason, and God wants to use this experience. Now, therefore, verse 5, he says, all I'm asking, church, is if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then, then, is that what your Bible says? Then, he says, after you do that, see, obedience activates faith and faith activates God. You obey God first because he told you to, he commanded you to. Then, he says, you shall be like a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. What? Drug addict, alcoholic, whoremonger, Prisoner, inmate, sick, in all kinds of bondage. He's talking to me, yes. See, no one gets a vote on what God wants to do in your life. Huh? Pick up your, your, your chin and square your shoulders and stand up straight and report for a duty in the presence of God. God got something for you to do. He got some place for you to go. Why? Because it's who you are. You're a child of God. You're a son of God. We're not going to have time. You better run over to Galatians chapter 5 and we'll come back to the book of Exodus if we have time. But uh, Paul is writing here about sons and servants. He's saying to us, he said that if, if, if you are a servant, though you are an heir, though you are a son, you will still be treated like you are a servant. Now notice what he says in Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. He says, this is the apostle Paul talking to the ears of God's grace. Or he's reminding us of who we are. You don't know who you are. Paul said, I'm, I'm, I, I, know, I know whose I am in Acts chapter 27. He was a, a, a servant. He was a, a, a prisoner. He was a slave on his way to Rome to be tried or to have an audience with Caesar. And here he had an encounter with an angel the night before. And he woke up the next day full and loaded for bear, standing before those who had authority over him. And he stood up and he said, listen, uh, we getting ready to have some troubled waters here, but let me just put a little word in your ear. I had an audience last night from my God. I, I'm not talking about your God. I'm talking about my God. And he sent an angel to speak to me uh, just to remind me of whose I am and who I believe and who I serve. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He said, there ain't nothing gonna happen to me or this boat. I know I'm a prisoner. I know I'm your prisoner. But brothers, listen, if you want to survive this storm, my advice to you is to stay close to me because I'm under the anointing of the living God. You are 
an anointed vessel of the most high God. They may have more than you got on this world, on this earth. They may have all of the riches that this world has to offer, but you got the anointing of the living God abiding within you. And wherever you walk under his anointing, even your shadow, Peter, can raise people up from the dead. Oh, come on, somebody. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. You don't know who you are. The apostle Paul said, he said, now, now I say that the ear, put your hand on your heart and know God is talking to and about you. That the ear, you are an ear to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. He says the ear, as long, you need to hear this, as he or she is a child, different nothing from a servant. He said, you're no different than a servant, though he be Lord of all. Y'all seen this? I, 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 I don't know what folk be talking about when they say that I'm, I'm going to collect what, what's mine. No, uh, I'm talking, when I say stuff like that, I'm talking about the truth of the fact that I am an ear to the kingdom of God. I'm a child of God. There's nothing in this world that can overcome me because greater if he had his in me than he that is in the world. See, I'm, I'm not comparing what I got with what the world got because it would be unfair. It's an unfair fight. It's disrespectful. You shouldn't even know that. Your bank account is in heaven. And as you walk it out and walk in obedience to God, God will release the resources as you need them. Is anybody hearing this? Hmm? See, See, it's, it's about obeying God. That's what God was saying. The covenant back there in Exodus when the children of Israel first came out of Egypt still hold true to the covenant, the covenant through Jesus Christ. In, in, in the New Testament, we are still heirs. We are still joint heirs. We are still children of the most high God. Peculiar, anointed from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. Hallelujah. He says, now I, I, I say, I say that the ear as long as he's a child. Tell your neighbor, no, maybe not, but just put your hand on your chest and say you gotta grow up. Uh, you, you, you gotta grow up, that's what he's saying. See, you, you, you gotta grow up because as long as you're a child, he says you are no different from a servant. You know, a servant always got masters, servants always got bosses, servants always got somebody over them telling them what to do, when to come, when to, when to go, when to get up, when to lay down. And here you are, the, you, you an ear, you, you inherited the earth as the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell there and you own that. Ha, ah, you ain't hearing this. You ain't hearing this. You're the boss. You're the owner. You are a child of God. You say, but I never worked to earn this. No, you inherited it. Huh? That's your inheritance. Huh? You need to walk around with your head up high, knowing that you are the one that's ultimately make decisions about what happens. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says you can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and without any kind of fear. Mm, he says, as long as you're a child, you're different nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. And we're not talking about one of those English lords. We're talking about one of these spiritual lords, Holy Ghost lords. The devil knows who you are. Who your, your real enemy, the one who's roaming about, trying to trip you up, trying to take you out, he knows who you are. Oh, he's betting on your ignorance. See, he, he comes and push you around and he better know he's poking a bear. Huh? Let, let, let him mess around. Keep poking until you wake up one day and decide that you are going to lay claim to your true identity. And you're going to realize, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm, I'm, I'm a child of God. I'm no drug addict. I'm no alcoholic. I'm no person that's eaten up with grief. I'm a child of the king. 
Hallelujah. Somebody lift your hands and praise the living God. Huh? He says, he says, oh, you ear. He says, you an ear. But, 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 as long as you're a child, God is not going to entrust his riches to you. Would you entrust your riches to these children running around here? Huh? I, I wouldn't think so. If you're a responsible parent, how much more you think that God would entrust his riches to us? And though we were, there are people that's not saved more responsible in terms of managing God's spiritual blessings than we are sometimes. Mm, I know we get quiet up in here. Mm -hmm. He says, you, you're no different than, than from a servant. Though you're Lord of all, he says, but you are still under tutors. That's why you have to keep going back. You know what I mean? You keep going back, getting the same counsel. Mm. Holy Ghost told me to say that. Yeah, you keep going. You keep going back in, around in circles. Got me going in circles. I'll stop there. Uh-huh. Yeah, some, some of us just keep going, going back around. How long are you going to keep coming around this mountain? You're going to get the same counsel. When God gives counsel, he ain't going to change it. Can we move on? He said, <laughs> look, I got to eat this too, okay? This is for us. He says, but you're under tutors and governors until the time appointed. Somebody say that. Until the time appointed. Until the time appointed. You can put your lips out. You can be rebellious. You can get angry with God all you want to. But God said, I'm not, until you pass this test, I'm not going to promote you. A folk going to come in church, get saved, come up under the tutorage of the Holy Ghost and people of God, and they're going to learn how to be accountable and get that thing down, and they're going to go running right past you. And you're still going to be back there wrestling around with stuff. Can't control your temper. Because you got a problem with this anger business. You see, this, this is what he's talking about. God is not going to bless you. Children of Israel in the book, in, in Egypt, in, in, in the wilderness, they never made it into the promised land because they never grew up. They never grew up. Well, God will leave you there. You go to heaven, but you won't walk out your assignment on this earth. Hmm. He says, now even so, we, when we were children, past tense, when we were children, we're in bondage, we're in the wilderness, under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, Watch this now. God sent forth his son. Y'all ain't hearing this. In the fullness of time when it was come, God sent forth his son. He's talking about Jesus. To redeem them that were under the law. Children of Israel were under the law in Egypt. If they stepped across the line, they were severely punished. And God allowed it because he was trying to teach. He says that we might receive the adoption of sons. And even when you receive, when you adopted and grafted into the body of Christ, you still got to be discipled. That's what he's saying here. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. He says, wherefore, you are no more a servant. You are no more a servant. Stand with me if you would. You are no more a servant. Come on, lift your hand. Just lift your hands unto the Lord. Come on, say it to yourself. I am no more a servant. You are no more a servant. 
but a son. I'm a son. And if I'm a son, then an ear of God through Christ. It's about time for me to start walking and acting and thinking like a spiritual, mature, adult person. How you hearing what I'm saying? I'm no longer a servant. The devil no longer can control me. I stand up under the anointing of God. I study his word. When I see, when the Holy Ghost reveals truth to me, I assimilate it. I hear it. I believe it. I, I, I walk it out. We can do this thing. You can do this thing. You're not a servant anymore. You don't have to wait for someone to come along and give you permission when to get up and when to lay down. You're a child of God. You are part of the kingdom of God. You represent God sent you forth to represent him. You can bind up any opposition that comes against you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can lay claim to your blessings that's coming down from the king of kings. Step out in faith. Oh, his bow. Barb is a young couple. Chronologically speaking, they're young enough to be my grandchildren. And some of you too. It's about time. They're stepping out. They're stepping out. Step out in your assignment. I don't know what your assignment is. It's time now for you to step up to the plate and stop making excuses. Wherever you are, there's something that you can do. Perhaps you're already doing it. Dedicate it to the Lord. Whatever you're doing, wherever you are, even if you're laying at home in a sick bed, dedicate that bed to the Lord. And you say to God that I'm too sick to get up, but I am going to invite your anointing in this place with me. This is my assignment. This is going to be my anointed place. And when the nurses come, they're going to be touched. And when the doctors come, they're going to be touched because of my anointed presence in this sick bed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You know, no devil can stop you from stepping up and stepping out into your assignment. Assignment. You are an ambassador for the living God. Stop letting that devil make you think that you can't manage the situation in your family. You can manage it. Step up to the plate and do it. It's what thus saith the Lord. Be bold, Joshua. Be bold, Joshua. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according According to all that is written therein, then you shall make your way prosperous. Then you should be successful. Oh, he oh, heads bowed, eyes closed. Just lift your hands through the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord, God, we praise you. Lord, we worship you. God, we honor your holy name. God, we are ears. We're joint ears with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God, I'm tired of acting like I'm a servant. I'm tired of walking around, Lord God, in bondage, begging permission to exist, begging permission, Father God, to use that which belonged to me. I ought to be managing it. Time for me, Lord God, to step out Step out of this worldly stuff. Stop feeling like I got to act like the people in the world when I own everything. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I lift Thank you, hands Lord. Total Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Unto you. Total, total inspiration unto you, Lord. Oh, God. You reign on the throne. You reign on the throne. You're God. And you're God alone. Oh, God. I worship the Lord. Yes, Lord. I just want to say. Yes, Lord. Love you more than anything. I love you more, Lord. Delight thyself in the Lord. Delight thyself in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
The altars are open. You reign the altars are open. For you I got oh, come on, talk to the Lord. Because of you, my God. Come on, let loose. Release this stubbornness, this rebellion. I can see Give it news. back to God. I just want to say. I just want to say. Oh, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you more than anything, Lord Jesus. I love oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, just pray. I just talk to God. Just lay before him. Come on, just give it up, just give it up, just give it up. Release it, whatever it is that you are holding on to. Whatever you are stubbornly holding on to. I love you. Rebellion and the presence of the living God. And you know. Oh, you're a child of the King, Son of God. My God will bless you with whatever you need in order to carry out your assignment. It's not about being rich or poor, being single or married. Oh, it's about walking out my obedience to the Lord. I know, God, that you have raised me up for such a time as this. God, I'm a child of the King. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. Oh, God bless. Pour out your anointing upon my brothers and sisters around this altar, Lord. In the name of Jesus, oh, glory. We anoint, Father God. We anoint, Lord God. We anoint, Lord Jesus. We anoint, Lord Jesus. We anoint, Lord God. I love we anoint, we ask Jesus. that you would release Holy Ghost power, I Lord. Worship and I worship and adore you, Lord. Just more thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord we anoint, we anoint afresh. We anoint a new Lord Jesus. I love you. I love you, Lord Jesus. I anoint, Lord Jesus. I anoint, I anoint, I anoint, I anoint afresh. Anoint afresh, anoint afresh, anoint afresh. Just one. Anoint afresh, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, press I your way. Press your way. Press, press until you successfully hear from God. Come on, just press, press, press. Just talk to Him. Come on, He knows what's on your heart. He knows what's in your mind. He knows just the more. things that are secretly hidden there. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, God, we release the, hallelujah, the anointing, the anointing power of the living God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, bless your Lord, bless your Lord, bless your Lord, bless your Lord, bless your Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for responding to their response. Thank you for responding to their response. In the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. No, I need it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The psalm is said in Psalm 37 that we should delight ourselves in the Lord, and God shall give us the desires of our hearts. The desires of our hearts after we delight ourselves in the Lord. Paul said in Romans 7, 22, that to delight in the law of the, the word of God in the inward man. So he's talking about responding in our hearts. The psalmist goes on to say, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And the promise is that he shall bring it to pass. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. God will give you desires of your heart. When they line up with his desires, when you delight yourself, when you rejoice in the things of God. That's why we've been preaching and teaching and counseling on all things. Give thanks for this is the will of God concerning your life in Christ Jesus. That's what he's saying. Delight thyself in the Lord. Rejoice in the things of God. Whether you're having a good day or a bad day, it's the promise given you waiting for it to be fulfilled. 
you know God is good for it so you can thank him for it even though you don't know how it's going to come to pass but it's in the book it's in the book. I don't care where you are right now, what your situation may be. I don't care what your financial situation, what your family, no matter what the situation. I don't care who's coming against you, who's talking. That you are a child of God. You're a child of God. You got to learn how to walk this thing out as a son and as a daughter. You're not a slave any longer. Stop acting like you're a slave. If anybody here today that's not saved, anybody here, just slip up your hand and we'll, we'll pray for you right where you stand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Anoint me to believe, accept, confess, obey, and understand that which I have heard. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace. For God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Just lift your hands in his presence. Before you leave here today, just praise him. Just go ahead and praise him. You ought to go ahead and thank him for what he's done. Hallelujah. Be bold. Be strong. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Be bold. Be strong. For the Lord thy God is with you. Do not be afraid. Come on and walk in faith and victory. Walk in faith and victory for the Lord thy God is with you. Be bold, be strong. Thank you for joining us today for Word Break. If you are ever in the greater Johnstown area, please join us for our next worship service, Sundays at 10.30 a.m. and Wednesdays at 6 p.m. If you're looking for a church home, at Penile, we believe there is a place for everyone and that everyone has a place. For more information about our church and ministries, please visit us online or give us a call. We pray you have received encouragement through the Word of God and the ministry today. We'll see you next time on Word Break.